Number 34. Iodine, which is I2, is a solid at room temperature but sublimes, so it converts from a solid into a gas when warmed. What is the temperature in a 73.3 milliliter bulb that contains 0.292 grams of iodine, I2 vapor, at a pressure of 0.462 atm? Okie dokie. So, talking about gases, right, we have different values. We have a volume here, we got a mass, and we have a pressure, right? So for these, I like to list out everything that I'm given and what I'm searching for. So the first thing is, is that they said, what is the temperature? So we're looking for a T value. Okay, so T equals question mark. They give us a volume, right? 73.3 milliliters. So I have a volume, 73... 0.3 mils, and they give me a mass, right? Grams is, in, is a mass, so maybe I'll just put an M value here. I got a mass of 0 0.292 grams of iodine, and then they told us that we have a pressure of 0 0.462 atm. Remember, atm, or atmosphere, is a pressure unit, so I have a P value, 0... 0.462 atm. Okay, so there's many different types of formulas in the gas chapter. So the hardest part is basically picking the right formula. Now, remember, if you only have one value for each variable, like for here, I, you know, I'm solving for one temperature, I only have one volume, one pressure, right? There was no two volumes that they gave me or two pressures. If they give you only one variable of each, you're using the ideal gas equation, which is this one. Good old PV equals NRT. But remember, this equation is very, very specific according to its units. So let's just run through the units. Remember, pressure, the P value, has to be an ATM. And thank goodness they give us that, so check. The V value is volume, and that has to be in liters. Uh-oh. They gave this to us in milliliters. So in order to use this formula, the first thing I got to do is I got to convert mils into liters. Well, how do I do that? We know that, right? Mils to liters, you could either do dimensional analysis, but we're way beyond that. Just know your, you know, quick hand things. You could divide by 1,000. Similarly, you could just take the decimal and move it three times to the right. Uh, sorry, the left. <laughs> Sometimes I still don't know my lefts from my rights. I have to, I have to put the L's on my hands. L for left. <laughs> so in this case, it would be, let me just erase this because I just need a little bit more room. I get 0 0.0733, and that's liters. Okay, now we have liters, so I can use that. N is the number of moles, but uh -oh, I don't see any N value here. I don't have any moles, but can I use one of these to get to moles? Yeah, they gave me grams of I2. So converting grams to moles is never going to go out of style. We need to know that like the back of our hand, right? So how do we go from grams to moles? Well, we can use the dimensional analysis, right? But we basically, it comes from the molar mass on the periodic table. I have 0 0.292 grams of I2 times by the ratio, remember, throw the unit that you don't want on the opposite side, so no more grams of I2, I want grams of I2 gone, and in this case, I want moles of I2. Gram to mole conversion of I2, or the same compound or molecule, is the periodic table. One mole, that's on the periodic table, it's always one mole, equals the molar mass. So, calc out. So I got 126.9 times 2, because I have two iodines. So I have 253.8 grams of iodine. Grams of iodines cancel out. And now let's find out the moles, 0.292 divided by 253.8. I'll put this into scientific notation. So 1.15 times 10 to the negative three, and now that's the moles of the I2. And now we have this amount. So we got the moles, perfect. So this basically is the same thing as 
1.15 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. Okay. Check. R is the universal gas constant. Whenever we're using this formula, the R value is 0 0.0821. Now, sometimes you'll see it as 0 0.08206, but if you just round it off, you know, 6 rounds the 0 up to a 1. But this is the reason why all of these are very, very specific, because the universal gas constant has all of the units inside this number. The units for the universal gas constant is ATM, times liter over mole times Kelvin. So if that's the case, what is the unit for temperature, which is capital T? Yeah, it's Kelvin. And that's what we're solving for. So let's now plug in the numbers. So I got 0 0.462. Now once I just check that I have the right units, I don't like to put my units into my equation, it just gets a little hairy. So 0 0.0733 equals my moles, which is now 1.15 times 10 to the negative third, the R value, and then I'm going to solve for X. Or you could put T or whatever you want to do. But basically you want to get this by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide by these two values. So, whoa, oh boy. So I'm going to divide by 1.15 times 10 to the negative 3 and 0 0.0821. You could also just simplify this, you know, get this as one number and then divide by that. That's fine too. You'll still get the same answer. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And these will cancel. Goodbye. And this will cancel. And now we just have x equal whatever this is. So once again, you know, you could simplify this, get this as one number, get this as one number, and then do your division. Just for simplicity of the video, I'm just going to do it all in one shot. So let's see, 0 0.462 times 0 0.0733 divided by 1.15 times 10 to the negative third. And then I'm going to divide again by 0 0.0821. And looks here like they gave me three sig figs for everything. So I'm just going to give three sig figs back. So my answer would be 359, and that's Kelvin. If you needed the um, answer in Celsius, remember, from Kelvin to Celsius, you just minus 273. Uh, they didn't say specifically. They just said, what is the temperature? So I'm just going to leave it as Kelvin. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Just keep studying hard, and good luck on your future tests and quizzes. I'll see you in the later lessons. Bye-bye.